Hi, I'm Nick Schwalik with 3D Systems. Today we're here to talk about Capture for Control. This is an inspection system that allows you to inspect and verify with confidence. The scanner is the Capture Scanner. It's a LED blue light scanner with a 300 millimeter standoff. And the depth of field of the scan is 180 millimeters. That's from the front to the back. At the front of the field of view and the rear of the field of view, we have a diagonal measurement of 172 millimeters and 260 millimeters. So you can scan nice size parts. What I'm going to do now is show Geomagic Control. We're going to scan the part into the system and do a quality evaluation on it. To get started, we go to the Capture tab. Inside the Capture tab, we have a Scan button. I'll click that and we'll automatically connect to the scanner. We'll see the light turn on and a dialog comes up. The dialog gives us a live preview of the part and the image that we're going to collect. This particular part, I'll take a couple shots and we'll combine those together in the software so that we have a single object that we can inspect. Now we'll scan the part. For this particular part, we'd like to take a couple shots so we can circle all the way around the part. When the scanner scans, it can only scan what it can see. So as you can see, the back side here is obscured by the view. So what we'll do is we're going to take eight shots as we rotate the part around and the software will put the scans back together. I'm going to hit the scan button and we'll take our first shot. The pattern moves around as the structured light captures the 3D data. On the screen, we can see our first shot. Now what I'll do is I'm going to rotate this particular part about 45 degrees. This will give me a additional view of the part. We're going to go around the side. And I currently have it set to do alignment by geometry. So it's actually using the part geometry to align subsequent scans. This is fully automatic, provided you have adequate overlap between scans. You can see here that looks good. We'll rotate some more. As you're doing the scanning, you can use the part and the part geometry. Other people will also use some targets on the part. Those are both supported. So it's going to depend on the type of part that you're scanning. If the part is doesn't have any unique geometry as you go around, the targets could be a, a nice way to optimize that and make sure it aligns. This particular part has a lot of geometry and it's pretty easy to align. And you can see the process is very simple. You rotate the part, you move it, and you continue scanning. And you can see the additional shots show up. The last shot, which is active, shows up in green. The prior shots are grayed out to show you that those are there, but you're not, they're not going to obscure the view. In this particular object, the scan speed is very, very fast. We have good contrast. You can adjust the exposure setting. The exposure setting will adjust for brightness on the part. Uh, for example, a darker part may need a higher exposure to capture the data. A white part will require lower exposure. The scan speed is very fast. It's about 0.3 seconds. So we're able to capture a lot of data here very quickly. We can see the model now on the screen. And if I open up the group, we have all the shots here of the part. And the last thing we'll do before we do our inspection is we'll combine these scans. Using the merge tool inside of Geometric Control, everything happens automatically. We have noise reduction that happens, we have alignment that happens, and then we have a final combination and then decimation of the model if we need to. For this particular model, I have a maximum triangle set of two and a half million. Generally, in this particular case, you're gonna have about a million to a million and a half triangles from about a scan nut like I did here. But here's the finished part. It looks great. We do have a little bit of the table and the software allows us to very quickly and easily select those areas and hit delete and get rid of those. Now in an inspection scenario you have a test object and you have a reference object. The test object is the object in question. You don't know if it's good or not. And the reference object is the object that you know is good. This would be a CAD model or an existing scan of a part that's the gold standard. What I'll do is I'll set this as test. And the next thing we'll do is we'll actually import our CAD model. we will go to import and we'll choose a CAD model. Here I have a step file. We can support a lot of different formats. Here we have our imported CAD model. Now the next thing to do is to align the scan and the CAD. There's a lot of flexibility in scan alignment. For this part, we'll use best fit. And because we didn't scan the bottom, we can actually say, let's use the top and the sides here, but not the bottom. 
So it's very easy to select faces that you'd like to use. Then we go into best for alignment and click apply. The scan aligns to the part very quickly and nicely. The next part in the inspection process is to get a color plot. So we'll hit 3D compare and click apply. And the software will generate a color plot showing us the distance from the CAD model to the scanned data. Here we can see the part is generally all green. There are a couple areas that are a little bit light yellow. We can choose to adjust our color spectrum. This is where you would put in your nominal values. Here I chose uh, 0.1 millimeter and one millimeter. The values look really nice, we'll click OK. And then from here, we choose what type of inspection and measurements and dimensions we'd like to do. For demonstration's sake, we'll just create a couple annotations and then we'll create a report. Here are my annotations. We'll save that view and then we'll cut a quick cross section and create a few dimensions. Here we have the view of the model. What I like to do now is take a dimension like a uh, diameter here. We'll take a diameter of the circle. We'll take another diameter of this other circle here. And we'll click OK. The last step is to create a report. So go here and we'll click on Create Report. And the software will now go through the process of taking screenshots and taking those dimensions that we created, embedding those into a report. And something unique to Geomagic Control is the 3D PDF. So we actually embed a 3D model inside of the PDF. Here's Adobe Acrobat. And in our view, on the first page here, we have a 3D model. This part can be rotated around. So when I click on it, it loads a 3D model. You can rotate this and see dimensions and annotations that we created before. If I go on to further pages, we can see we have statistics and information about the 3D comparison. Further through the report are standard views, front, back, left, right, top, bottom. Then we have our annotations. Those are our views which show uh, particular callouts in certain areas in the model. And then finally, we have our cross sections and dimensions. Those all have pass fail values down in the table on the bottom of the page. That's capture for control by 3D systems. Thank you, I'm Nick Schwaller.